Um, I'm um, Amanda. Um, I live in Hornchurch and I'm a housewife and look after my parents. Uh, my name is John. I uh, live in Hornchurch. I work in the City of London. I'm Sarah. I'm 22 um, from Hornchurch and I'm a marketing assistant for a housing association. And I'm Rebecca from Hornchurch. I'm 18 and I'm currently doing my A-levels. I was 19. Um, my mother had gone to the GP for something and to this day she still can't remember what she'd actually gone for because as she sat down in the chair the doctor said to her how long have you had those spots by your eyes and my mum said well I've had them all my life everybody in my family's got them and with that the doctor had whisked her off to her for blood tests and found out her cholesterol was high, then she was put on, on a diet and then she was put on statins and then it was, well, have your children, how, how old are your children, right, we'll get them checked. And I think it was just because the doctor had been either on a course recently or there'd been new literature come through that she'd been reading that she picked up on it so quickly. Otherwise, if my mum hadn't have been diagnosed then, then I wouldn't have been either. Um, I, I just sort of, um, believed that if, if I'd got it then there was a chance the children could get it or would, would not get it. I didn't realise you could sort of get a, a double dose if you like. Um, no, I think I'd have been more insistent with my GP to get the children tested. I don't think I'd have sat there and just said all right I'll, you know, I'll wait till they're 16. I'd have probably gone in there badgering them more often, you know, when are you going to test them and when can we take them and... I was diagnosed with the condition, I was being treated with a cholesterol of what, 15, I think mine was sky yeah. high, you know, the fact that they should have known the, the double dose, which was all news to me, it was only afterwards that, you know, lucky enough, you got got the internet now that you can quite easily find this information and I think they should have put two and two together. And when you'd taken Rihanna to the doctors with these lumps on the knuckles and they just dismissed them as fatty lumps, which I found was just one of them advised you to go home and smash Michael it with, with a book. book. Yeah. I, I just found that so out of date. And the more I read around it, the more I realised the telltale signs were there. Well, yeah, Rihanna was our middle daughter. Um, she, yeah, she was bright and bubbly, uh, always up. She was up for anything. She was always volunteering people. Um, you know, yeah, oh, my mum can do that, you know. <laughs> yeah, you need, you need a volunteer at school, her hand would go up. Um, she was in the Green Club. She was a junior road safety officer. Um, she tried, she'd try everything. She went, I can't remember, was it gymnastics? She went dancing, she went horse riding, she did brownies. Um, if we went over the park on the bike, she was the first, she was at the, the head, you know, she'd ride on the head, turn around and come back, you know, why are you all taking so long? And um, so it, it, it came right out of the blue. She, she went to school, um, she'd not long started in the secondary school, year seven. Um, they had a group, PE lesson where they had to run round the school field to twice and then were all going to be timed. It was they called it cross country um, for a an inter school um, um, county event. Um, and she did. She she'd said in the morning. She said I don't really want to do this. And I said to her, well, don't worry. Just stay at the back and walk round. I said no one will moan at you. Um, but she, she went to school, she left that day, she was quite happy, it was going to be her birthday the next day. Um, and then we got a phone call at lunchtime um, to say that she'd been taken ill. And, you know, um, I think John was home, he was decorating, so he went, went up to the school. I, he rang me because I was out shopping. Um, and I sort of dashed, she'd been taken in by ambulance to the hospital, so I met him over there. Um, but all the time you're thinking, oh, maybe, you know, she'll just be a bit 
you know, wheezy, a bit puffed out. Maybe you'd see us sitting there with an oxygen mask on. And but when we we got to the hospital, they wouldn't let us see her. Um, then they they took us into a, a little side room, and then all of a sudden they came in and said there wasn't anything more they could do for her. And the coroner's office rang and said they wanted to send her, her heart away for more tests. Um, and it was getting close, it was sort of December by then, and we said, no, you know, we want to arrange a funeral. Well, we can have the, the body back, but we'll, you know, the heart will have the test, and then we'll send them. I said, no, I'm not having them sort of separated. So they were quite good in that they, they took the heart, sent it off, and brought it straight back. Um, and it went up to the uh, pathologist at the Royal Brompton for further testing. And that's when they came back and said most of her coronary arteries were, were blocked down to a pinhole. And, um, you know, it was, she thought that the, the reason was FH and that the rest of the family should be sort of investigated. And so that was really the first time we, we sort of knew anything about it. So she hadn't even been ill, you know, complaining of any sort of pains, breathlessness, anything. So it really was, well, it was a big shock. I know when I, so I've taken the, the statins for years now, but I know when I had the children and there'd be little snippets in the papers and you know, this new treatment and that new treatment. And I used to think, oh, well, that's all right then, because if, if they do, if they have got it, by the time we find out, there'll be other other tablets, mm. other types of treatment. You know, everything would have advanced, and and they'll be fine. Um, and then you find out that it doesn't always work like that. But I think understanding the way, unfortunately, the government do things, I'd probably need to do my research around costs because that's all they seem to maybe understand. Yeah, we, we, we definitely like to know, know more about what it's like, especially for us too as well. It's really important that when we have children that we know what it's going to mean for them and um, I'm, I'm like now in a relationship so it's talking to them about it and you know seeing what's in their, their family and their history and you do a lot more you would um, if you didn't have something like that that runs in your family or, or you know unfortunately had lost someone in that situation. I think yeah I, I struggle with it to, to talk about it sometimes. Um, I think for ages, I think where I think just for going to school had a lot to do with it because I was constantly having to deal with it. Um, so after that, you know, I didn't I didn't like going a, going in a room. I wouldn't go and you know to to see her um, at the cemetery. I couldn't do those things. I think because I'd been forced to do it so much. So I did kind of not. I didn't want to talk about it a lot. I didn't want to deal with things a lot. I, w I would say angry because. I think less me, it's more seeing what my mum and dad have had to go through. And I think, you know, that question of what would you say to someone that thinks that cholesterol isn't important and, and FH isn't important is to, is to say to them, well, like sit down with my mum and dad for a few seconds and, and hear what they went through when they lost Rihanna and stuff. And because that is the, you know, unfortunately she is the worst case scenario. Unfortunately she is, you know, the question of like why FH is so important to, to, to manage and to treat and to understand. Thank you.